Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. Welcome back to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Again, I'm so happy to have Nancy Alvarez on, and we're going to talk about a module from the book, Lead grow shape uh, that she edited with uh, three other pharmacy leaders, Michael Negretti, Gary Kyle, and John Gravenstein. And in this episode, we're going to talk about two really important topics. First, how to use the book and uh, her recommendation and the recommendation of the editors is that it's a book that's meant to be pulled in pieces. So if you're teaching the course, uh, you take the modules that you feel are most relevant, but if you're using it for yourself, and it's not priced like a regular textbook. My students are paying $200 for a chemistry book, $300 for an anatomy and physiology book, it's like $10 on Kindle and $15 in print. It's meant to be used as something that you look at the chapter titles, and your subconscious will tell you, oh, that's the, that's the chapter I need to start with. And she talks about which module would be most important to her, and also how important it is to be present, especially as you're looking towards residency, graduation. This is a really special last couple of months, and it's going to be ones that you'll never forget. So I hope that uh, you get a lot out of this episode and you really uh, enjoy uh, what it is to speak to national leader. So if you are going through this module, if I were to pick one module, it'd be module 10, the listening module. I'm an extrovert, and where I really struggle is to, to truly listen and to just slow down and, and just kind of listen to what other people are saying before saying, I can fix it, I can do it. Uh, is there a module in particular that either was impactful for you or that you enjoyed writing the most? Well, I think it's number 11, and it's how do I occur? And uh, that's actually been developed by Michael Negretti. And I think it is truly the most impactful. And I will be very honest, I have not uh, engaged. Uh, part of it's a little fear-based. Part of it is, yeah, I pretty much know how I'm perceived because I've received a lot of feedback from others. Some positive and some, you know, uh, opportunities for growth. But the how, I, the how do I occur um, requires someone mm -hmm to uh, identify people uh, that they trust and have a conversation, a guided conversation with them. And I can recall uh, one individual in, um, in one of the groups that I work with uh, approached me and said, you know, would you be one of the participants? And I, I was worried. And I thought, well, I don't really know this person very well. Uh, I've observed this person, but I, I don't really don't really know, gosh, what am I going to say? And I agreed. And uh, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't want to let her down. So I agreed. And uh, we had a conversation. And I told her what I could about her. And through this, again, this guided conversation. And what really struck me is the silence on the phone after we finished. And so I said, you know, gosh, you're, you're a little quiet. And she says, it's interesting to me that after this conversation, what you said, based on the fact that I've only known you for nine months, and what this person said, who lives with me, my roommate, who's lived with me for three years, is very similar. Wow. And, and, and what was said was, you know, you're very nice and you're very um, and you're very gregarious and you're and you're always, you know, seemingly in the middle of all the activity. But I don't really know you. And and I think that that this person was most jarred by the roommate who said, you know, I've been living with you for these years and I really don't know you. Huh. And, 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 and what that has done is that allowed this person to do some growing, to ask, well, why is that? What is it that I'm doing that doesn't allow me to be seen by other people? Because that's how I occur to them. Whereas 
I thought I occurred as this very gregarious in the middle of everything kind of person. And, and that really has allowed uh, this person to continue to seek uh, answers and to grow and to, you know, really uh, be a, a different version uh, of, of herself, more aligned with her values, her interests, her strengths and her needs. Um, so I think that that's the most uh, impactful uh, module I dabble with, uh, you know, doing it myself. Uh, I have I- people identified as the people I would ask. And maybe I will be as courageous as others have been to engage in that module. Um, okay. Yeah. No, I, I, uh, to, to take it to something that's a little more common in my life is the end of semester reviews of an instructor. And I kind of take some time away and just like, okay, because I know some of them are going to be really good and some of them are going to be bad. And, and hearing feedback about yourself is never easy, I think. And I think the, is it the Jahari window, right? With, with all the adjectives. So there's like Uh a certain number of adjectives that they can use and it's very organized. It's like these four rooms or four quadrants. And it's just kind of a really, it's not just here. Tell me what you think about it. It's a really structured way of, I think Biden was one of the quote, there's things that we know that we know, there's things that we know that we don't know, but there's things that we don't know that we don't know. And I feel like that's something that would get into those things that we don't know that we don't know. And really, those are the things that are going to really help us move forward. Okay. Well, is there anything that I didn't ask you about the book or uh, the leadership uh, that you wanted to mention? No, I think that you've been very thorough in your questions and you know really have appreciated the opportunity to speak about a leader development. I have found in my my current role uh, that you know that that people uh, see only the current role. and what what really strikes me is that you know that there isn't always an appreciation for the fact that you know it isn't a straight line from, you know, graduate at the University of Arizona 25 years ago to, you know, leading the, you know, the largest pharmacy organization um, in the country. And that, you know, indeed, the path has been very, very messy uh, and, and very, very difficult, and also created a lot of um, uh, opportunity to grow, because we, we do indeed grow when we have challenge. Uh, and, you know, and it's great to be in a spot of bliss and, you know, to be able to take a break. Uh, but at some point we, we do need to continue to grow in order to, to offer, you know, our best self to others. Uh, and so all of the information in the book, um, has application. It may or may not resonate with, with everyone, uh, but it's not intended to address the mass. It really is intended for those who are going to facilitate to see what works for them or what they think their group might need. And then for those in the group to, you know, play, we talk about, you know, thinking about each module as a piece of clothing. You have the opportunity to put it on, to try it on for size, to see if it fits, to see if you look flattering in it or terrible, uh, to see how others think you look in that piece of clothing and at the end, if you decide that it's a good fit, well, great. Then you've just added to your leadership wardrobe. And if not, then put it back on the rack and try something else. Um, there's no harm in trying. Uh, and that's really, you know, what has worked in my life um, and what I'm hoping will work in others. Uh, because, you know, as pharmacists, we are required to be perfect only in the care of patients only when we're making sure that the right medication gets to the right patient and is used optimally. Um, And even then, you know, uh, we've got tools that help us to be perfect. Um, Otherwise, we're not supposed to be perfect. We're supposed to play. We're supposed to, you know, do good for others. and, And I'm hopeful that, you know, that people will find this resource helpful to them uh, uh, because it does have a lot of utility for, for anyone willing to be a learner and see possibility. Nancy, I want to tell you a little story about my dad. He's a Peruvian immigrant. He came here and uh, he worked at a 
at a hotel as a waiter in Washington, D.C. And later, about 20 years later, he was the leader of the group that uh, communicated between Peru, Canada, the United States. And he got one of those mega suites. Do you know what I'm talking about? The ones with the dining room table and the full kitchen, you know, 12 person dining room table. Yes. And I got to see that suite and it was amazing. But then I realized, Dad, did you actually sleep under the covers? He's like, no, I I just slept on the bed. I was like, did you ever use it? Well, I had people over, but I never actually really used the room. I was just always downstairs. So we hear about all these great things that come with leadership. And here he was, you know, president in the presidential suite, and he can't even use the suite. Like, it was just, um, do you run into anything like that where you're like, you know, I've got this, these great perks, but I'm so busy being a leader, my perks are, are gone, <laughs> or my perks are difficult to access. <laughs> Yeah, or we're not somehow deserving of them. And I would say probably earlier in my life, I've had those um, those situations where I'm so busy doing that I'm not really focused on living. And because of the work that that we've done over 20 years and, and my own growth as a result of digging through the material and presenting the material and helping others, you know, you can't help but absorb a lot of it yourself. And I, I am so grateful because I intentionally stop and think about my current role. And sometimes I'm overwhelmed by the idea that, that it's me and that, uh, I have the opportunity that I have and that really not very many people have had it over the, you know, the course of, of APHA's existence. There are only 161 other presidents and me. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> and so that has caused me to really stop and say, yes, it's busy. My work world is extremely challenging and unpleasant at times. And I have this really amazing opportunity, pay attention, take it in. It will only happen one time and it is almost over, less than 60 days. And I think what really helped me to see uh, that was, um, came about, I guess, in September when we were with our colleagues, there's a, a gentleman who brought out this book that apparently the tradition was that when the APHA Board of Trustees came together, they had an opportunity to sign this book. And apparently it had been lost in the archives. And he's a retired individual and he volunteers and he was poking around in the archives and he found this book. And he brought it out and told us a little bit about the history and about the, uh, the tradition that you know occurred and uh and i listened to him and then uh, he invited us up to come and sign it and he had white gloves on you know so it was uh, serious that you know you don't want to deposit any of your hand oils on yeah the, yeah on the document and so when the meeting broke up i'm still in the back and I'm, I'm talking to the staff and i'm beginning to think about what we need to do for the next agenda item and my colleagues were gathering around the front and one of them shouted out you know, can you come up here? Because, well, we need you to sign. And I thought, yes, yes, I'll be there. And and they're like, no, we need you to sign first. And that was so jarring to me. And it really woke me up to say, you know what? The agenda will come to be just fine. I just need to walk up and take in this moment and sign this document and then realize that the likes of Albert Prescott have signed, Daniel B. Smith have signed. And I was then almost overwhelmed and grateful that, pay attention, Nancy, it only comes around once. And I think that's what I wished for everyone is to, you know, really pay attention to the fact that we have opportunity and we can take it in. We can get what we need to get done, but we can also be very present. Uh, and so, you know, from that 
day in September till now, I really think about, you know, being fully present. Another quick example is I had a student come into my office uh, about an hour ago and he was actually lingering outside the door and I happened to turn around and I saw him and I invited him in. He's like, oh, you know, I was worried that I was going to interrupt you. And I thought in my mind, oh, my God, I'm so busy and I've got so much to do and I'm going to take five minutes out for this young man. It turned out to be 45 minutes and very enjoyable. And he came to tell me about his experience at the January board meeting that occurs for uh, the APHA Academy of Student Pharmacists every January. And he was so joyful. He had, you know, been a successful candidate in obtaining an office. Uh, He, you know, he flew east and participated and now met other excellent student pharmacists. And he thought enough of me to come by and tell me about his experiences. And then he says with a little twinkle in his eye, you know, when I introduced myself and told people why I wanted to, you know, be part of leadership, he says, I included on my slide the fact that uh, the dean, uh, another, another individual, and you are all APHA presidents. And it was amazing to me to see my student peers be completely jealous about the fact that, you know, you're at our school. And I thought, gosh, this is, this is the prize for being present is I get to listen to this young man talk about how joyful he is in his experience. And my email, well, it's still there. And it'll get done when it gets done. But I could never get back that 45-minute conversation ever. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm so grateful. Wow. I don't know what to say. So I would, I would have another story, but I, I can't. I can't do it. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't top that. So I'm going <laughs> to. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being on the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Thank you. Hey, I've got some good news. PLEA has negotiated a $140 discount for prospective 2018 PLEA facilitators to attend APHA's leadership program on February 10th to 11th in D.C. Again, attending this program is a great way to brush up your knowledge and skills if you're interested in facilitating at LDS, the Leader Development Seminar this summer. All you have to do is enter promo code LEAD360, P-L-E-I, when you register at elearning.pharmacist.com, and I have a link in the show notes. Support for this episode comes from the audiobook Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach. With over 9,000 sales in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia, it's the go to resource to ease the pharmacology challenge. Available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com in print, ebook, and audiobook. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag hash pharmacy leaders 